to worship this morning, I have just a few announcements. Um, first and foremost, uh, confirmation class starts today. We'll go from noon until about 1.30. Lunch will be provided, and um, we're very eager to get started on that journey. Um, a little bit later this month, we're going to do our catch-up session to um, finish our conversation about holy disruption. Um, give me another week or so, and we'll get that scheduled. I'll let you know next week when we're going to do it. Um, uh, the session and deacons are going to meet on Tuesday evening. Um, the deacons will meet at 6 here in the parlor, and then uh, right after that, at about 6.45, the session will meet um, so that we can take care of business. Um, see, the breakfast bunch is meeting on the 18th. And you are welcome to join. If you're going to join us and you haven't before, please check in with Nancy Naughton um, and, uh, so that we can make sure we've got enough space at the table. And Tuesday morning with the ladies, um, because it's always a good time <laughs> for, for um, fellowship and coffee and uh, silliness. And then service, too, right? So, um, I do have a bit of an announcement to make. Um, something big kind of happened over the holiday while I was away. Um, Todd asked a very important question, and I gave him the answer, and it was up with me. So, um, so to answer all of your questions, I don't know. That, that's as far as we got. He asked, I said yes, and then we said now, but we said we don't know. So when we know more, we will let you know, but um, I wanted to be sure to share this with my church family first uh, before it went anywhere else publicly. Um, we are very excited and um, we're looking forward to see what the future brings for us. And so anyhow, I appreciate your prayers and support and I'll be available for viewings of the ring here at the Fellowship time at the church. Um, I'll also, I mean, you should definitely go in because there's coffee and goodies and everything. It's not all about the ring, I promise. Um, are there other announcements that we need to make? Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
together. Holy refugee of Israel, we would like to believe that we would be like the Magi, that we would protect the innocent child, that we would stand up to power, but too often we have turned away from those who need us. Too often we have led to the powers that be, residing ourselves to the way it has always been. Forgive our lack of action, guide us back to your purposes, and help us be brave enough to do your will. Amen. God calls to us from wherever we are. God's love shines like a beacon. God's voice echoes in our souls. You are forgiven. Let's see.
From Kathy's Gospel, the story of the wise men seeking Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For, you shall, from, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing together we three kings and if you feel so inclined, move forward.
Sunday after Christmas at a church in Toledo while I was in seminary. The pastor, of course, was on vacation, and so I had everybody move forward for the children's time. And then I said, since you're already settled in here, why don't you just stay here for the rest of the service? And they did it. <laughs> there was one person who got back up and went to the back row where they had been seated initially, but nobody got that way. I'm just saying. It's not going to hurt you to come closer. So she starts with the words from Matthew. The time of the After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have served his star at his rising, and have come to pay him homage. Once upon a time, there were three very wise men who were all sitting in their own countries, minding their own business, when a bright star lodged in the right eye of each of them. The star was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or in their own imaginations. But they were wise enough to know it did not matter all that much. The point was, something beyond them was calling to them. And it was a tug that they had been waiting for all of their lives. Each in his own country had tried books, tried magic, tried astrology. One had lived on nothing but dry herbs boiled in water. Another had spent his entire fortune learning how to read and in an ancient language. The third had learned to walk on hot coals, though it did nothing for him beyond the great sense of relief he felt at the end. Despite their best efforts, all three of them still felt that something was missing. They were all glad for a reason to get out of town, which was clearly where the star was calling them, out, away from everything they knew how to manage and survive, out from under the reputations they had built for themselves, the high expectations, the disappointing returns. And so they set out one by one, each believing that he was the only one with a star in his eye, until they all on the road to Jerusalem. From a distance, each thought the other to be a mirage at first, a twinkling reflection made of vapor and heat. But as they drew near to one another, they saw the star they had in common, like a tattoo or a secret handshake. Something that made them brothers before they spoke. They all believed that the star was leading them to Jerusalem. This made perfect sense, because they had every reason to believe they were on their way to meet a king. They had no trouble gaining entrance to the palace. They looked rich, and that was enough to get them a royal audience. The king they met was something of a disappointment. He was lonely, rumbled, and he had terrible breath. His skin looked a funny orange color and sickly as if his bile had gotten the best of him. The guards on either side of him shook in fear of their king, so much that their spears rattled against their shields. Without even comparing notes, the wise men knew he was not the person they were looking for. Do you know of any other kings in the general area? They asked. He had been picking at his fingernails until then, letting them know how bored he was. But their question got his attention. He looked 
a star in each of their eyes. His own eyes grew perfectly round, like the eyes of a snake. Nursed him and put him to bed. Then, before the light coming. 
walking through the window of the house had entirely gone out. The three wise men fell asleep right where they sat. In the morning when they woke, the wise men could not find their stars anywhere. They searched each other's eyes, but the stars were gone. Frantically, they looked in all the corners and under the chairs. The baby's mother even shook out his blankets. But still, no stars. Soon the wise men calmed down and said, Never mind. We do not need them anymore. They had found what they were looking for, something they could not lose. As much as they hated to, they added, they had better be on their way. They would not be going back to Jerusalem, they said. All three of them had woken from the same identical dream, warning, to ste warning them to steer clear of the city. If anyone in Jerusalem knew anything at all, they would be here instead of there. Besides, none of the wise men's old maps worked anymore. They would have to find a new way home. Do you guys know what a map is? Yeah, I was going to say, because it's before GPS. <laughs> so the wise men picked up their packs, which were lighter than before. Then they lined up in front of the baby to thank him for the gifts he had given them. What in the world are you talking about? The baby's mother said, laughing. For the scent and weight and skin of a baby, said the first wise man, who had no interest in living on herbs anymore. For this home and the love here, said the second wise man, who could not remember how to say it in the ancient language. For a really great story, said the third wise man, who thought that telling it might do a lot more for him than walking on hot coals. Then the wise men walked outside, stretched, kissed the baby goodbye, and went home by another way. Will you please stand as you are able to let us declare what you believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your order of worship. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness 
rotten earth. Erase all who suffer until the time comes when you flood the whole creation with justice and mercy. In this banquet, restore us in your image, surround us with your company, and prepare us for your freedom. Then we become to resemble your son, through whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours now and forever. O oh God, we make our prayer to you in the name of the one who was and is to come, your son, Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples to pray these words in the fullness of children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord was at table with his disciples, and he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this, remembering me. In the same manner, after the supper, our Lord took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood, which has been poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, all of you, of it. The Apostle Paul tells us later that as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death until he comes. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the table for all has been prepared. As the elders come forward, they will serve with tongs a piece of bread into your waiting hands to receive the gift. You may go ahead and partake of the bread as you receive it, and I'll ask you to hold the cup until all are served. Will the elders please come forward?